Whenever Steve Echemendi goes out onto the beach at Moss Landing, just north of Monterey, where the cable actually begins, he's struck again by the enormity of the project. You can see the monster air conditioners on the side of the box where, I, where we have transformers ramping up the voltage to 10,000 volts. Echemendi is director of marine operations out at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. He's talking about an unmanned undersea marine laboratory half a mile down on the ocean floor, a laboratory that enables scientists to perform deep sea experiments from their offices on dry land and to explore a cold, dark, hidden world. The idea is that scientists can do good science from wherever they are, wherever their office is. So we go out and plug them into an observatory 3,000 feet deep. Usually scientists take boats out to sea load their instruments into the water and then get data till their batteries fail. It's expensive and only gives a glimpse at life under the ocean. Imagine if you were going to go take a picture of San Francisco and you went out on Coit Tower at 2 in the morning and took a picture of what San Francisco's like. And then you go home and say, this is San Francisco. Well, it isn't San Francisco. What if you had taken the picture at rush hour at 8 in the morning or 10 in the morning? But with the new observatory, the picture of deep sea life is more like a film than a snapshot. Here, a cable as thick as a garden hose runs electricity out to a metal hub in the middle of Monterey Bay, and that cable then sends back data. Eight lines power eight different experiments, from an earthquake tremor monitor to a large robotic rover that inches along the ocean floor. Well, one of the very exciting things is we hope to see organisms that have never been seen before by human eyes, on the surface or at depth. That's Erica Raymond, who is working with a low-light video camera to record the habits and ecological patterns on the ocean floor. It's called Eye in the Sea, and it's one of the first experiments to be hooked up. That kind of peak inside the world at 3,000 feet below the surface is unprecedented, she says. In a test run, she saw all kinds of organisms, from grenadier fish to spindly leg crabs, and she says she even spotted a huge Pacific sleeper shark down there. These sharks are so large that when we see them in front of our camera system, we can only see part of them. And we'll see the mouth coming, approaching in, these big eyes and huge mouth and, and sort of a whitish area around the mouth where it's been chewing on things. There's an educational component to her work where kids, teachers, and the general public will be able to view the undersea camera. But the work goes beyond opening people's eyes to another world, she says. Undoubtedly, there is a oh, wow, gee whiz factor to it. But there is also a very relevant uh, nature to it, which is trying to understand changes in species over time. So we want to go west. Back on land, in an experimental square tank that looks like a very deep swimming pool, Ken Smith is putting the VW bug-sized benthic rover through its paces. No, I think it's done bubbling. A marine ecologist at Ambari, Smith is using the rover to gather data about the amount and type of food that's found more than half a mile below the surface. Deep sea below about 1,000 meters covers probably about 71% of the globe. I mean, it, it, it's a huge expanse of the ocean. We probably sampled way less than 1% of that area. So we don't know how this system reacts to changes. The changes on Smith's mind is climate change. And really, that's the hub of much of this oceanic work. The appeal of getting a constant stream of data is not just for the sake of science itself, but also because that wealth of information might be able to shorten the time needed to solve questions about climate change. And says Steve Echemendi, looking over his beach and the thick cable running underneath it. The time needed to figure out climate change is short. The world's leaders need to understand exactly what, what the truth is, what's the source of this, or else what can they do? They need good science or they can't make good decisions. And Echemendi hopes, with the newest, coolest tool of marine scientists, that good science just got a little better. For Quest, I'm David Gorn, KQED Radio News.